Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and this is a short, informative video about a brand new product that I'm uh, introducing to the local Compassion Clubs in Vancouver. And uh, I'd like to point out that anyone can do this anywhere in the world. And basically, what I'm doing is that I'm introducing my new uh, double dose shortbread cookies. Okay, they're quite remarkable. Okay, they, I, I got this beautiful pot leaf stamped right inside them, in the cookie, embossed into them, which I do at the, as a trick. Okay, but they really look real pretty. Okay, now these cookies are exactly twice as powerful as my traditional uh, cookies. Okay, this one here is a chocolate mint cookie here, and this is a shortbread. Now, the reason I use the shortbread cookies is because you can put, it uses so much butter. And my Delta 11 carboxy uh, process uh, requires butter to absorb, you know, or any fat, but particularly butter works very well. And shortbread cookies are buttery type cookies and they're very Christmas like. And it allowed me to make. A cookie that's actually 20% uh, smaller in weight than this one, but it's twice as powerful as this one. Now, my traditional cookies have a tradition of really knocking people really well. Okay, and in my literature, I openly promote, and uh, I'm trying, I'm flicking it on the camera here, so maybe I can pick it up. I actually have a cross pattern in the cookie and this allows the cookie to be broken in quarters and halves and quarters very easily and it's because you know you should only really eat a quarter of one of these at least the first time okay now this is totally contrary to this cookie because it's exactly twice as powerful as this one and I'm saying that a chronic stoner should eat the whole cookie. And if that scares you, only eat half a cookie. If you're not a chronic stoner, eat half a cookie and you will experience what's called a first pass effect. Okay. And this used to be done back in the days of the hashish dens and uh, the bohemian societies that evolved around uh, what was called uh, the uh, Age of Enlightenment. Okay. Now the reality is that when it was in Venice, it created a stir and did this and stayed about ten years. And when it went, then it went to another city, Barcelona, for example, and stayed there for ten years or so. And they got kicked off and went to Paris and went and stayed there for a while. But you know, the reality it was is well, the this uh, Bohemian society and what was called the uh, Age of Enlightenment came from what was promoted everywhere these went as uh, the hashish uh, opium, the, the hashish dens. Now, these hashish dens, uh, Turkish hashish dens, they, sir, they definitely uh, brought the hookah, which was, you know, to Europe. And which was a brand new invention, and or maybe Europe created the hookah, uh, but it was at that same time. And uh, Turks primarily ate hash, so what they did is they had feasts where everybody ate hash, and they'd have a feast with just musicians. And uh, these cookies are supposed to duplicate what a Turkish uh, feast would do, which would be cause an overdose of cannabinoids to be flooding your system. And this calls, causes a first pass effect. First pass effects are ex very beneficial to your liver. Okay. It, uh, uh, it, it, uh, science shows that it affects your liver for at least six months. Okay. And, uh, 
And what it also says is you can only get a really true, genuine first pass effect like the last one every six months. Okay. Uh, you can cheat by taking more the next time. Now, the reality is, is if, if you're anyone out there who's uh, presently eating edibles, uh, all you have to do to create a first pass effect is eat about twice as much as what you already are used to eating. Okay? This will trigger uh, a reaction, which is called a first pass effect. It's where your liver gets shocked by how much THC is going from stomach to liver. And it sends a message to your pineal gland. Okay? And this pineal gland uh, pumps all kinds of rescue medicine that the liver uh, imagines it's under attack with. And this sends a flood of chemicals to your liver. And by the time it hits your liver, they go, oh my God, it's just pot. And you're now stoned from an overdose of pot and all these natural made chemicals. Now, cannabis is an alkaloid and it's one of the few out there that is an alkaloid and its first pass effect is actually beneficial to the liver. It'll reverse uh, degenerative effects of hard drug use. Uh, hep C patients uh, will have much better readings uh, six months later uh, after a first pass effect. Now, the reality is, is in acidic chemical, and when you research first pass effect, they keep mentioning that it's uh, uh, in heroin, cocaine, uh, methamphetamines, all these drugs all have first pass effects, and they're correct. Okay? Uh, the first pass effect on a uh, crack cocaine hit is uh, the most vivid example of, uh, of what a first pass effect does. Uh, the, everyone will contest that the first hit, you'll never have another hit like that. It'll never happen again because what it was was a first pass effect. Uh, your brain, your pineal gland sent all these chemicals to, uh, to fight it off and, uh, it only happens once. Okay. Now, the reality is first pass effects are also what causes a heroin addict to go from having a dependency. You know, like the guy starts doing heroin uh, and one day he does a little more than the next time and he has a quite a remarkable experience. And But after that, he does a binging. And, but after that, he has a higher addiction. And he needs more just to maintain. Now, the reality is, is uh, those are typical examples of how acidic acids, you know, all this group of pharmaceuticals react and are called uh, powerful drugs because they have a first pass effect. And uh, mm, cannabis most definitely has a first pass effect as well. And it's one of the reasons why it is irrefutably a powerful medicine. But it actually reverses the, uh, the uh, degradation of your liver. It, uh, it's actually a healthy thing for your liver. So basically, now the idea back, back to what, what these cookies did, okay? Way back in the Turkish dens, Okay, they promoted people to come in and eat all these dishes that contained hash. And when you passed out, you they were tagged. They would tag you. And after three, four hours of people feasting, most of them were passed out. Now, what they would do is about three. If you try to wake these people up from eating too much hash or eating too much of one of these cookies. Or you understand, or eating more than you're used to eating of anything, uh, any pot edible, you will, uh, you may induce a first pass effect, which means you you, you just want to nod off. 
uh, the stone comes on very strong, and it's really almost impossible to stop people from passing out. So allow them to pass out. Okay? Now, about four hours later, uh, the, person, the effect of the powerful nature of a first pass effect will start to calm down in the system and you're asleep and you'll start being in REM sleep and have a buddy there wake you up when he sees the flickering of the eyes and knows that you're in REM sleep. And this happens about four hours later. When you wake this person up, while in this state, uh, the experience is quite unique. It's an enlightened experience. You're in a dream. Okay? It feels like a dream. It's got you hypnotized. Yes. Okay? It, 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 it's a unique experience. Okay? And the Renaissance age prospered in this. Okay? Wherever these Turkish dens happened, uh, these parties happened and great artists mingled with other great artists and they produced great art. Uh, musicians mingled with other great musicians and great music happened. Uh, poets got with poets and great poetry happened. Philosophers with philosophers and great philosophy happened. It, these dream states is a very powerful experience and a self-enlightening experience and wherever they went they scared authority everywhere they went now the reality is is uh, this is in history carefully hidden and basically uh, my little stab at authority is what if we triggered a renaissance period in every city in every county, in everywhere in the world. It's a powerful thought, okay? Uh, the reality of Renaissance was it was big in Venice, it was big in this city, it was big in this city, and they were chased out of these cities about every about 10 years, 8 years, 15 years after it started up, and they would just move to another city in Europe, and it was called the Renaissance. Uh, but imagine if this happened throughout the world, uh, we just might have an opportunity to affect the world through a metanoia. And authority was always uh, terrified, especially the churches, of what this did uh, to the community around it. It scared them. Okay, One of the reasons cannabis is illegal to this day is because they saw the effect of these Turkish... Uh, dens and Turkey had everything to do with Muslims and Muslims had everything to do with the devil and Muslims and oh no, it was just a rotten thing. But what can I say? Uh, that's another history. But bottom line is, is my intent is to start uh, a cultural revolution or a cultural evolution through triggering the ability to uh, have experience of what uh, made the Renaissance great and uh, take it as it will. If the roots are good, the end product will be good. And that's just the way it is. And on that, thank you very much.